In this video, I'm going to be introducing one of two tenses that we are going to be learning that are both tenses that occur in the past. And as always with my videos, I'm going to have three embedded items that when you watch this video and pay attention closely, you'll be able to take a quiz with those three embedded items. Now, the tense that we are going to concentrate on today is the imperfect tense. The imperfect tense is a tense that occurs in the past. Now remember when we learned about the present tense, which, if for example, the verb amat has three parts to it. It has a present stem, a present vowel, and a present ending. And as I always say, the answer is because of the form. So how do I know when I look at that that it is, and I can list off all the things, third person singular, present active indicative, present particularly, I know because of the form. It has the present stem, the present vowel, and the present ending. And we come up with that due to how we fixed with our flipbook the formation of these indicatives. Now, when we translate it, we know that we can say, first of all, subject, he, she, or it, loves, is loving, does love. And remember that I call upon a particular student and tell to them, what's going on with that? Why were we able to say so many words just for that one little form? Whereas in Latin, there is one way to express action happening right now. In English, there are a variety, because there is no such thing as a present tense in English. There's present simple, present progressive, present emphatic, there are more, present frequentative, present inceptive, all kinds of things. And so likewise, in Latin, to express action that is happening in the past, there's two ways particularly. And we are concentrating on one way that is known as the imperfect tense. Your first item is past, P-A-S-T, past tense, because that's what the imperfect tense is expressing. Now, I will make another video in which I go over the specific nuts and bolts of to how to form the imperfect tense. But most importantly, what you need to know from this video is that the imperfect tense is recognizable by two letters more than any other. And those two letters are the letters B, A. That will be shoved within the verb in and of itself. So to give an example of what we have seen previously, again, that verb, Amat, which of course corresponds with the present stem of the verb amo amare, because it is a first conjugation, it has that A, and then of course it has the T ending. The imperfect tense would look like the following. And there you can see that BA, the bot, that tells to me that this action is an imperfect action. Now let's talk about what that particularly means. What it means is that it's an action that happens in the past, but is not completed. The word perfect in Latin means completed, done. But imperfect indicates an action that is not. And so therefore, there are several ways that you can express in English the imperfect tense of Latin to emphasize the fact that it is action of the past, but not completed. Now, I'm going to give you an example of how we can understand this. If I would have, let's say, a timeline, and right now is during school, whatever period I'm teaching you, and I can say that starting at 5.50 this morning, I know that's rather small, I'll write it a little bit larger, starting at 5.50, I started taking a shower, and I was done taking that shower at 6 o'clock a.m. before I start my drive to school. So the activity that was going on between 5.50 and 6 a.m. this morning is in the past. But if I were to describe my activity at 5.55, I would use in Latin the imperfect tense because even though that activity of taking a shower is in the past, I would have to express it as though it was not completed. And so these are the ways by which you translate the imperfect tense. And again, why is the imperfect tense so easy to recognize? Because you will see, bah, that BA is like a huge fist that comes and punches you in the face and lets you know that it is imperfect action. So let's go with amabat. How would we then express it? Well, there are several ways. One way that you could express an imperfect tense verb is simply to say, and instead of amabat, I'm going to use a, a generic subject for subject and verb for verb. 
So I suppose I can put it over, let's put it over here underneath that BA. So the first way, you could simply say, the subject verb. Simply add an ED to the end of the verb to indicate past. This is called a simple past expression in English. And so, at 5.55 this morning, I showered with an ED. Now, we're going to learn another tense in Latin called the perfect tense, which you can surmise if imperfect means not completed. Perfect tense is completed. For both the imperfect and the perfect tense, you can say the subject verb. Because that expression in English is not implying either way, completed or incompleted. It just says it happened in the past. And so I can say over here for my verb, amabat, he loved, with an ed. The second one is my favorite expression for the imperfect tense. And so I'm going to put an asterisk by it. And the way that you would express it, the subject, uh oh, I can't spell subject. The subject was verbing. This expression of saying the subject was verbing, he was loving. And at 5.55 a.m. this morning, Mr. Adams was showering. That expression in English allows you to say an action occurring in the past, but as I describe it, it is a non-completed action. Because I will continue showering at 5.56, 5.57, and so forth and so on. And that is your second item for this little quiz. Was verbing. Two words. Was verbing. And that is the way that you would express a verb when you see it in the imperfect tense. He was loving. And it's a not completed action. In the past, but not completed as we describe it. Now, there are other ways, and there are lesser ways, in my opinion, that we can express the imperfect tense. One, we can say, the subject began verbing. And so, we would use that as an expression to tell what happens at 550. Mr. Adams began showering. Do you see how that also does not express a completed action? It's what we call an inceptive action, a beginning action. And as a matter of fact, in English, that is called the present simple, or the past simple. That is called the past progressive, and that's called the past inceptive. A fourth way that you could say is that the subject kept verbing. So in that way, at 5.55, Mr. Adams kept showering. It was a repeated, continuous action. Because not only is imperfect not completed, but it can imply an action that is repeated, continuous. And then finally, the fifth way that you can express it is simply, the subject used to verb. And so, again, when you say the subject used to verb, it's a non-completed action. But I only want you to use, for the most part, now Eke Romani will use several expressions, the subject verbed or the subject was verbing. And why does the subject was verbing, why does that one have an asterisk? Because that is the expression in English in which it emphasizes the fact that it is a non-completed action. At 5.55, Mr. Adams was showering. At 5.56, Mr. Adams was showering. At 6.01, he was not showering. At 6.01, we would have to use a perfect expression, but that's another video and another part to it. So imperfect tense, to summarize. You will recognize because you will see the BA. And you will know that it is expressing an action of the past in which the action as you describe it is a non-completed action. Your final expression, simply verbed, V-E-R-B-E-D. So nevertheless, that's the imperfect. In the next video, hopefully you'll watch it right after this one, I'll go over specifically how to form it, but the most important part, VA. Thanks.